Hello? Hello? Everybody can come Good morning. in. For the public hearing, everybody's welcome. Just let me know when you're ready to start the meeting, Terry. You want me to start, Mary? I'm gonna, yeah, I, I was going to run it, but if you want to do it, it's fine with me. We're having a little trouble hearing you, Mary. If we could hear her, she could do it. If we could see her. Mm -hmm. You want me to start, Mary? My, my computer is acting like okay, I'll, bizarre. I'll start it. Uh, um, we're going to wait two more minutes because we told everybody 110. Okay, that's what. Terry, if you do that, I'd appreciate it. Did you hear me? Hey. Yeah, you loud and clear, Coswell. Thank you. He's a cake. All these all reappointments. Great. Don't, don't don't wait, wait, wait. It's an easy. It's our job. <laughs> Can't do it. I'll do it. Governor dated May 18, 2022, to the Executive Council. It says, I am pleased to nominate Catherine Watson Kozol. Kozol. Uh, for reappointment to the position of the Administrative Lodger at the Department of Industrial Actions to a six year term expiring August 8, 2026. I submit this nomination for the advice and consent of the Executive Council pursuant to Mass General Law 23E Section 5. I I'm enclosing the nominee's resume for your convenience. Sincerely, Charles D. Baker. Okay, I understand that uh, the Chief Judge is here and he's going to be offering some testimony. Um, Currently, we have in the room uh, Councillor Duff, we have Councillor Ferrara and Councillor Devaney. The other councillors will be in momentarily. Uh, I'll introduce them when they come in. Uh, and um, Judge Hernandez, um, I understand you're here to speak on behalf of all of the reappointments today. That's correct. And um, it would be really nice if we could wrap them all up into one speech. I would do, I would do my best, and that was my intent. That was my intention to do all in one in one speech. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for the speech. We appreciate it. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm here. These four judges. I know. Always come up here. You know, basically bragging about how great my judges are, and, and they are. But these four are truly the cream of the crop. Um, they have the last few years, given everything they we've been through, have stepped up. Whether it be mediations, pre-hearing conferences, pre-hearing memos, walk-in lump sums, whatever it has taken. They've stepped up and not only maintained it, but it's exceeded uh, my expectations. Uh, I, I come here asking for um, the privilege of being confirmed. I ask for your vote, and I could not speak highly, more highly of um, all four candidates. You're back 100% from the pandemic? Uh, we are still, we are in, with in person hearings. We're, we're, in, we're in, excuse me, for hearings, we're in person. For conciliations and conferences, we're still virtual. We have not missed a beat. In fact, with conciliations, we've actually increased the resolution. We're now at 57% of cases resolved at, um, at conciliation. With respect to- Can you think of any reason why you do away with uh, the Zoom hearings on conciliations no, and things like that? At this moment, not at all. Okay. With respect with conferences, we're actually, in 2019, before the pandemic, we had 11,700 continuances. In 2021, we were down to 5,700. So we literally cut continuances in half because the virtual is there, they have assigned time, so there's less continuances and people don't have to travel as much. So they're like getting stuck in traffic, conflicts in different regions. So it's been working fine. So whatever they can do in the courtroom has translated to the virtual uh, platform. So again, I can't be more proud of our judges. And I said, these four in these room, and it's like, no, it's like a judge long. Uh, 
But Judge, I'll give you one second. And Judge, we all agree that you're doing a fantastic job. Okay, I think that's unanimous. Councilor Devaney. Thank you. You got the best boss in the world. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you, I've been here 23 years. And I always like, it's like a report card for the Industrial Action Board. But because they came so fast, they just got nominated, you know, seven days ago. And so it, it probably is an impossibility. But this is the first time I don't have them. And I'm, I was really concerned about that. They, they, it's not your fault. It's, it's the council's fault. I, and, I can, and I can speak with respect to their ACEs. They're all highly effective. They're all, I review them personally. I, I draft them. And all four of them. You know what but you know what I love to go with? That it's a any discrimination or prejudice. There hasn't been. I, no, but I'm saying I could look at it. Right. I wish we had the district court superior court. I love it. I'll be more than happy to to send them to you. I can assure you that there is no bias, any discrimination, anything on behalf, on, on behalf of these four judges. I'm just saying that um, that's what I miss. But when the cops are scheduled all in one day like that, it's an impossibility for you to give us that. Take your time. It doesn't. I don't need it tomorrow. But um, I do like to say that it's sure. right. And then, I mean, I know they came up quickly, but they have been overdue for a while. So they were anxious to anxious to get case moving. Does anybody else have any questions for Chief Judge Hernandez? Yes, so, same here. Same here. Thank you, Judge uh, Omar Hernandez. Speaking, we speak right now on behalf of all four. Yeah. Both on all four at once. Great. They, they, they really are. No, I, I, yes. And, you know, we all rely on uh, Council Ayanella for workers' comp expert. As well as you should, yes. Because none of us uh, really practice up there. Okay, thank you, uh, Chief Judge. Okay, um, and we're going to get to the nominee. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you, um, Catherine Watson Coziel. I'm an administrative law judge at the Department of Industrial Accidents, as you know. Um, I've been at the department for a total of 17 years. My first um, three years, I was an administrative judge in the Worcester Regional Office where I sat and I conducted hearings and conferences, the things that Judge Hernandez has just been talking about. Um, for the last 14 years, I've been an administrative law judge um, on the reviewing board. I actually brought my colleague, um, administrative law judge, Martin, but he's not speaking. He's just. He's learned well. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't get. We'll hear from Judge Long in a moment. Opportunity. What is your finish? We're going to let him pop up because we are. Very good. Well, anyways, I am from West Springfield, Massachusetts. I went to the public schools there. I'm the youngest of five kids. My dad was a railroad um, engineer and a leader, and my mom was a dietitian. Went to physical therapy school because I, who knows what they want to do when they're 18. I didn't, but my mother said get a profession. So I went to Northeastern. I have a bachelor's of science in physical therapy, worked in physical therapy five years, liked it, didn't love it series of events happened and people kept telling me you should go to law school. I, I didn't know, know any lawyers. Nobody in my family's a lawyer. I never knew any lawyers. Um, I took the LSAT and I went to Boston University School of Law and absolutely loved it and have never looked back. Um, I had the really good fortune of getting to work at Pellegrini and Sealy in Springfield, Mass. And they hired me as a clerk at, when I was still in law school. And then they hired me as an attorney and they taught me what I know about workers' comp. And from there, I worked for um, the uh, for Associate Justice um, Kent B. Smith of the Massachusetts Appeals Court, and he's extremely well known. Of, unfortunately, he's passed away, but he was extremely well known for criminal procedure. He wrote the Mass Practice series, and he's the one who actually got me into writing Mass Practice for Workers Comp. Um, but he was like my mentor. Uh, my dad died when I was 15, but Judge Smith like took me under his wing, and he was always telling me, "What are you doing next, kid? What are you doing next, kid?" So the next thing I was a staff attorney. Then he said to me, okay, you've been a staff attorney eight years. It's time to move on. Why don't you apply for one of these DIA judgeships? And I did. And I really liked it. But I really loved appellate work. And so when the opportunity opened up, I applied. And um, as an administrative law judge, we sit on three judge panels to hear appeals from the decisions the judges make. So that's our primary different um, difference in our job. Um, description because after us, if you appeal from our decision, you go to the appeals court. There's no review in the superior court. So it's a little bit different um, procedurally how you get up to the appeals court, but we're the intermediate. 
And I, I love it because I think people need to have certainty, certainty they can, so that they can make decisions on whether they should settle their case, whether they shouldn't settle their case, whether they should challenge what we write. And I think it helps because when you're an AJ, you can have a really great, exciting case and write a beautiful decision, but nobody else sees it. And if the parties don't appeal, maybe the issue never gets percolated up. So I feel it's very important work and I enjoy it. And I would just ask if you would kindly vote in my favor. Excellent statement. We're gonna let Judge Wong pop up for a minute since I messed up the hearing. Um, again. Quite all right. Come on, step up. It's good to see you again, Judge. Good to see you, Counselor. You're coming up in December, right? Uh, from what I understand, hopefully. Yeah, well, I hope so. Let's see how he does. Yeah, let's see how he does today. Yeah. So, uh, counselors, it's an honor and a privilege really to be here to speak on behalf of the reappointment of Judge Koziel. Uh, the past five and a half years, I've been working alongside uh, closely uh, in person in the last couple of years um, remotely. And it's based on that experience that I would suggest to you that everybody in this room, all the stakeholders in the workers' comp system will benefit by her reappointment. Um, not only because of her temperament, her compassion, her understanding of the law, she literally does write the book on workers' compensation. So to have Judge Koziel as a resource at the Department of Industrial Accidents is invaluable. And we are all lucky to have her put her name in to be nominated. Um, I know that a lot of people are concerned about you know, judicial temperament and how is the, how does the judge act? I cannot say anything but the high, give the highest praise for Judge Koziel's judicial temperament. Not only does she give litigants and their lawyers the utmost respect, but I think what has driven it home for me is before I became a judge, I, I would deal with pro se litigants every once in a while. I never really understood or saw how it worked from from behind the scenes uh, at, at the reviewing board. What I've seen Judge Koziel do with her pro se litigants is treat them as if they were the highest paid lawyer from a Boston or a Springfield or a law, or any firm. Can I counsel I another up again there? I would put him up there, <laughs> yes. But this is what I'm saying. The way that she treats the pro se litigants and the, and the litigants that do not have attorneys um, I think speaks volumes. She gives them the resources, the opportunity. She directs them to exactly where they should be, where they should go. And it's that, it's that type of an attitude that I think speaks to her professionalism and just also to her as a person. So again, I would, I would give um, the utmost support. Thank you, Judge. And hang around, we might want to have some questions for you. How many times you had to overturn our other nominees? It's got to be. Council Juneville. Please? I'll tell you right now, none. So where do you, well, I'm going to ask you, where do you sit? Uh, in Boston. Okay. Is yeah. that where you both sit? We both sit in Boston, yes. But with the virtual, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff we're doing is, is virtual. But And do you say she's got a good temperament? Absolutely. You ever see a loser temper? I don't think I ever have. Been looking for a woman like that all my life. This guy found her. This guy found her. Thank you, Councilor Juba. Thank you, Judge. Uh, so, is there anybody in opposition? Okay, Councilor Ferrara, you're up. Thank you. Uh, I have no questions. I uh, excuse me. I'm not done. No questions. No questions. But I have a comment. That's just a comment. Statement to yeah. Get the timer ready. Fifteen minutes. I have fourteen more minutes. Um, I don't do comp work at all, ever. Um, but I do rely on Council Ionella. Um, Sean Flaherty also reached out to me and uh, Mike Occasion as well. And uh, they're big fans of, of all four of you. Uh, so you do a great job in uh, making sure that uh, injured workers are treated, treated fairly and properly. So I appreciate all of your, uh, all of your efforts. Thank you. Council Juvenile. I don't do workman's comp uh, or workers' comp either. I count on Council Ionella and the who, uh, Give me the recommendation, and they, they're two up, thumbs up with you, so you're fine with me. Also, Devaney. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming a distance. Um, six, uh, the council scheduled six hearings today. 
We met with people Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. And I, I'm really grateful for the people who came from their weekend to meet with me. Because I, I want to know the whole person. I already know you, and I know the people, uh, but I want to know what's happened uh, on the board and has it changed and all of that. Um, I was very impressed with you, uh, your, your writing. And what could be more uh, apropos? You wrote a book about that. Okay. Tell us about how you did that and how can you write it? Well, it's, a pra it's not like I'm a prosaic writer. It's, it's technical writing, so I'm okay at that. I never got a literary award to try. Um, it's, it's really so, um, giving synopsis of what the case is held and what it means for. It, it's a practice manual for lawyers when they have a case, like what is more trouble the law and to judges um, in training, you know, the district court judges, the superior court judges, they do training every year and the Flashner Judicial Institute runs their trainings and provides them with those books. So that was like a year in the doing that. And so I assisted him, you know, he was the author, I'm just the co-author, so I assisted him in the preparation of that. I don't know whether this is apropos, but when you look at, uh, when is the first time you came before me, 18? 2000, it must have been 2005 at the beginning of 2005 because I started in April of 2005. Well, you've done a great job. I've heard good things about you. And believe me, I hear, I hear there isn't. And I'm so pleased with the whole board now. Uh, you know, I couldn't say enough about it. So tell me, I, I don't know whether this is appropriate, but is there, you know, one disabled person that came before you that you had a case that you will stand out in your memory? So significant, maybe it was so rewarding. One that I, as a judge, that I had as a judge, um, there's a lot of them, so it's really hard to say because there's a lot of them for a lot of different reasons. And um, I think the one that was really the saddest one I saw was this man that they they thought that he was dangerous, but he was in some pain that he was just like really difficult uh, and they I felt bad for the man because we ended up having a state police officer at the department and it really wasn't it wasn't a case of him being a violent person he had um, complex regional pain syndrome so bad that he showed up in my courtroom in January this was back in Worcester in a t-shirt January in Worcester is not t-shirt weather but he couldn't stand having anything touch his skin on his arm and that was that was a heartbreaker. But you know, I hadn't seen him before that date, and um, it was actually one of the other judges that had the case before me. So I didn't know what his situation was, and um, I was getting information from an attorney who was like, he's threatened me, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, then you go to the senior judge, and they all agree with the police officer there. But in the end, I felt he really the threat to him, which was just very sad, very sad. Um, you have had so many in all these years. Um, do you ever hear, do you ever follow up with any of them or hear how they did, at, you know, coming before you disabled uh, and what their future was? Do you ever find that out? Not really, yeah. um, unless an attorney tells you what they're doing now. Um, I had one back in the day when I worked at Pellegrini and Saley, and he was a young man who'd been run over. Well, he stacked, they, he operated a pipe bending machine, and he was actually my client. And he got, the, they took the pipes from the bottom of the pile, and they all rolled over on 3,500 pounds of pipes on him. And he couldn't go back to construction work. And he ended up, putting himself, you know, with the help of Oak Rehab, putting himself through Hoyo Community College, and he's extremely successful right now. So every once in a while, he'll call me up, and he'll say, hey, guess what I'm doing now? And it's so usually a new business venture or something, so yeah, it's that's really really nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm very happy that you, uh, you you stayed, and you're up for reappointment, and uh, I love the board, I love your boss, and uh, it's a nice feeling. It really is nice to have you, and I really enjoyed working, uh, meeting with you, and catching up on uh, the years that you've been on there, so thank you. Well, thank you. You, Councilor Ayano. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't have any questions. You don't want to put up now the whole bunch.
was excellent. The whole bunch, all four of them were excellent. Uh, I didn't meet with any of them like I did the first two because these people get great reviews from the employee bar, the bar, but you're representing an employer or an employee. These people are all fair. They give everyone a fair shot. That's, that's all anybody ever wants. Uh, and you got the best supporter in town, the Chief Judge Omar Hernandez. Looking forward to supporting you next week. Thank you. So tough. I, I concur with uh, Council Ionella, who's actually the only one of us who is an expert in your field here. Um, but th there's no reason to prolong these hearings uh, for nonsense. Uh, you, you're eminently qualified. You're doing a terrific job. You have great reviews. So I have no questions. Mr. Paul, I hear you do a great job. Same as everyone else, except Councilor I know I don't do this practice area, but a few phone calls with these reappointments. And uh, as long as the board is looking out for injured workers and the attorneys and the colleagues have positive things to say, I feel good too. So I look forward to supporting you this week. Councilor Hurley, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Um, um, I'm no, you're up. I, I am very pleased and honored to uh, be able to put your name in nomination next week. Your resume is absolutely fabulous, uh, Judge Koziel, and I um, would also indicate that obviously you got an A-plus rating from Pellegrini Seely and also from some of the folks in Boston that I checked with. So um, I'm sure that uh, you're gonna, from what everybody said, you will be voted on favorably and um, Keep doing the great job you've been doing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Jubenville, did you have another comment? Okay, we're done. Next. Next. No, I stand. Okay. Uh, May 18th, 2022, Executive Council, Council Chamber, State House, Boston, Mass. Dear Councilors, I'm pleased to nominate John J. Barrett III for reappointment to the position of Administrative Judge at the Department of Industrial Accidents to a six year term expiring on January 6th, 2027. <clears throat> I submit the nomination for the advice and consent Executive Council pursuant to Mass General Laws 23E, Section 5. I'm enclosing the resume for your convenience. Sincerely, Charles D. Baker. Uh, what do we got? We got a witness? Uh, judge, yes. Yes. Judge, yes. judge, yes. judge, yes. judge, sure. Yes. We'll take that as a yes vote. A thumbs up. Okay. Tell us briefly, we work under the law of brevity here. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is John Barrett. Um, I'd like to thank you all for having me in today um, to be interviewed for the uh, nomination for reappointment to the position of administrative judge. Um, I'd like to also thank uh, Governor Baker for nominating me to serve in this position. I'm truly honored and humbled uh, to appear before you today. We have a brief background, I'm 53 years old. I was born in Boston and was raised in Rentham, Massachusetts. My mother, a registered nurse for 50 years, um, just retired, uh, worked at Metro West Medical Center in the labor and delivery department. 
My father was a police, um, was a police officer and detective, and he passed away back in 1999 from lung cancer. Um, I have a younger brother and four younger sisters. Um, I've been very fortunate in my career. I just want to say that right up front. I've served two communities as a police officer early on in my career, and I've worked for three well-respected law firms uh, as a trial attorney, focusing on workers' compensation and general liability cases. For the last seven years, I've served as an administrative judge, and it's been a privilege of a lifetime to do that. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the parties and counsel from initial conference to the hearing stage. I've also um, managed more than 200 mediations um, in regular workers' comp cases and also served as the mediating judge in the opioid diversion program. I'm good public service and um, I respect the system, respect everybody involved in the system, and uh, I'd be honored and uh, it would be a privilege to be able to serve for another six years. Let me ask you, where were you a police officer? I was a police officer first in Rentham. And I transferred the uh, transit police in Boston, where I served for four years. Oh, good for you. Yeah. And your father was a detective where? In Rentham for 25 years. Westwood? Rentham. Rentham. Yes. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, so, Councilor Devaney, you're up. Thank you for meeting with me. Oh, you're very welcome. I can't believe that, you know, I had you on a weekend to come out from the Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. So I thank you for that. Sure. Um, You've had hundreds of cases. Now, um, tell me, um, in mediation, so that people on the air will understand what you do when you mediate, um, you served on the opioid uh, committee. Tell us about that particular mediation. Well, the opioid program, it's a diversion program where um, it's, it's generally now used in cases where the employee has settled their workers' compensation case. And it comes into the system in a couple of ways. Either the employee petitions to come into the system or the insurance company files a petition to um, have uh, the case tracked into the diversion program. And what it is is basically if the case is uh, in the program, uh, we meet with the employee, the employee's attorney, and the defense attorney. And we discuss what's going on. And usually the employee is struggling with, with um, opioid medication long term. And they're they're not happy with their lives and how things are going. And what we do is we devise and develop a plan with a, uh, a care coordinator <clears throat> to work with the treating doctors um, to to come up with a plan to either completely switch somebody from opioid medication onto something else, or more likely reduce the employee's um, use of or dose dose level of opioid medication. And we've had a great deal of success, I think, with uh, that program over the years, and uh, I'm proud of it and proud to be a part of it. Um, now, how long has this been, the, uh, uh, the alternative treatment pathway? Uh, when did that start? It start well, it, it started before I be, uh, became a judge. Uh, judge Hernandez um, developed it um, with, uh, with others, and uh, it was in place before I got here. Um, but I have enjoyed being a part of it, and it's been um, just a privilege to, to help. <laughs> but it's a sign of the times, isn't it? There must be a lot of work that's I think, injected. I think it is. I think there's some talk about actually expanding the program to people who are actually still receiving benefits, not just to people who have settled their cases. Thank you, Omar, for starting that. That's wonderful. So um, how many people do you think have gone through that program in those years? I don't know the stats. Omar can probably tell you, but I think it'll say probably. That's wonderful. Yeah. They can go all yeah. their lives. Yeah, that's great. So um, uh, it's been hard through the pandemic, you know, but you've continued. Um, how do you evaluate someone before you who you're not looking in his eyes or her eyes and and and? I don't know whether you have it on a screen or whatever. How have you been operating? Well, we um, we have the conference level that we we're involved in is uh, virtual, um, and at that level, generally the employees don't test. They don't testify at all at that level. We we meet with the attorneys and the employees present, but when we're you know, making evaluations of um, credibility and 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 me actually doing a trial, that's in person. So we're in the room with that person, see them come in or any witnesses they come in testify live. So that's how we make evaluations of credibility. Okay. And you've done training to blame for justice and all of that. Yes, I have. Realize what part of your your duties are. It, it really is amazing. I did that when I was practicing. We would train, we would talk with adjusters and help them understand the system yeah. and what what's important. But that prepared you for you know, industrial accident board. I think so. Um, no, I am um, I, I'm very pleased. And I have to tell something pri publicly that I said privately to you. When I was about 10 years old, I used to take piano lessons 
and Miss Manning, and 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 her nephew lived with her. Yeah. And he used to walk down the stairs all the time. He never came in the room with where the piano was. I thought he was the most handsome man in the world, and I had the maddest crush at 10 years old on John Barrett. So when I saw that name, I said, oh my God. <laughs> I embarrassed him. Uh, he doesn't know whether he's related. But anyway, yeah, that, that's my John Barrett story. But um, really, uh, I'm, I'm so pleased with what you've done. And um, uh, I can't imagine how hard it is. Now, has it increased since you've been on uh, the number of people coming? You know, I, I don't know that it's increased. Um, I don't know the stats. I, I would have been busy um, since I started. We've, we've been very busy, uh, but I don't know the numbers, whether they were less before I came on board or whether they've gone up, but we've been steady, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, we talked a lot and I, I, I just it was just a pleasure to meet up with you again and to see you're being reappointed and that you're staying with it because um, it's, it's it, I, I can't say enough about the board. You know, everybody's working together, and everyone has that thing. And you each have such respect for each other, and that's so important, you know. And, and so. <laughs> so thank you. Thank I'm you sorry, for, now. Thank you for coming out this Sunday to meet with me. Again, I have no questions. It's uh, familiar with uh, you, the work. Same thing I said with Judge Coulson, you're fair, you're compassionate, you're very lucky and shape. That's all I want to do. It's good work. Thank you, Counselor. Counselor Duff. No questions. Counselor Kennedy. Uh, I, I'm just going to say it again. We rely on Chris, Counselor I know. And he says you do a fantastic job up there. Your reputation is great. I'll vote for you. Thank you very much. Same, and I would just note that of the reappointments today, it's great to see folks who have different careers besides just in uh, the legal world, both the perspective as an employee who's not a lawyer, and on top of it, haven't worked um, with the broader population in a different way. So uh, I have no questions for you. For uh, record my colleagues, as I said earlier, I don't do it, I rely on Council Ionella. And, uh, good luck. Thank you, sir. Who was the chief in the uh, BTA when you were there? I, oh, the first chief was a Boston um, lieutenant who was there for about a, a month, and then it was um, Brad. Brad. No, he was. He had just left. Was it, no, no. Brad was there before I got there. It was. Um, I forget his name. Was Ball. I forget his name. But it was um, o O'Donovan. Um, oh, John O'Donovan. Yeah, he, was there, he was there most of the time I was there. Yeah. Good guy. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Mary. No problem. Um, Mr. Barrett, uh, we talked for a little bit, and as I told you, I rely on Pellegrini Sealy. They give you an A-plus rating, uh, as well as some of the folks out of Boston. So um, I'm going to vote for you and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Like the other counselors, I rely on Counselor Ianella and the Chief, and they both give you the thumbs up, so I'll be voting for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Counselor. I appreciate all your time. Thanks. And 22 Executive Council, Council Chamber, State House, Boston, Mass. Dear Councilors, I'm pleased to nominate Karen A. Fitzgerald for reappointment to the position of Administrative Judge at the Department of Industrial Accidents to a six year term, expiring on January 6, 2027. Hopefully, we will all be here at that time. I submit this nomination for the advice and consent of the Executive Council pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 23E, Section 5. I'm closing the resume for your convenience. Sincerely, Charles D. Baker, Governor. Uh, with that, Councilor Devaney, you're up. You can sit or stand. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. We've got to give you a, a chance. Hey. You should wave it. I'll wave it. Okay, Councilor Devaney. That was easy. Councilor Devaney. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. It was such a pleasure to meet with you, honestly. Um, and it was fun, too. <laughs> I have to say, um, 
you know what I'd like you to do? I like we're on public access, which I love. And I want you, people don't know the difference between an administrative law judge or an administrative judge. So would you tell people in the public what the difference is of your you know your position and, and your responsibilities? Sure. So it is my position as an administrative judge to hear conferences, issue temporary orders, and then do full he evidentiary hearings. Um, we also do mediations, which um, because of the pandemic, we've been doing a lot more of. The administrative law judge is there as a review board so that any parties that are dissatisfied with the decision, the hearing decision that we write, will take it to them um, for review. I see. So, um, um, this has been a difficult year, hasn't it, in the pandemic? It has. But you people have continued and, and you haven't skipped a beat. We have been. Absolutely wonderful. Correct. So, um, the, these injured workers, um, have they increased since you've been on or does it stay the same? Is there any reason to how many come in? Like Judge Barrett said, I don't know what the statistics are with respect to that. But I can tell you, I have still continued working nonstop and been busy. So I don't know if it's the same, a little bit less, a little bit more. I'm not, I'm not certain of that. But, uh, you know, you have worked in law offices, which means a lot to me. I think you bring a lot to the bench with that. And um, can you tell us some of the experience you've had in law firms uh, related to uh, workman's compensation and the work that you do now? So for 23 years prior to um, assuming the bench, I represented employees for the most part. I did dabble a little in, in insurance defense, but the bulk of my practice was um, employees. Um, I worked in a couple of law firms before I um, became self-employed and was working with my dad, fortunately for me, um, for 15 years prior to coming on the bench. Um, my dad had practiced workers' comp for over 50 years. So I couldn't really ask for a better mentor. Um, and so, you know, each case is different. You handle each case differently. You do, you know, prepare as best you can. In, in talking with you, um, I saw the influence your, your dad had. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity you had to go to him and ask questions and learn from him. It was, it, it, was, it was wonderful. And I was fortunate enough to start when there were people like, Judge Marr, who was working for Liberty Mutual and, and were kind to the new attorneys and, and you know, helped us out. So it, it, I've been very fortunate. Well, he must be very proud that you followed in his footsteps. So um, what do you think is the biggest challenge on the Industrial Accident Board? Is there a challenge? It's hard to say if there's a challenge because I think the challenge that we've faced has been the pandemic. And I think with um, Judge Hernandez's guidance and direction, we have stayed open. We have continued. We have not skipped a beat. Whether we started first with, um, you know, conference calls on the phone and hearing cases to then going virtual, um, I, I feel that we haven't skipped a beat. And I think the pandemic really was the is probably would have been a tipping point. And and are you still virtual? We're virtual for conferences. We are live for hearings. Um, we are probably 95% virtual for mediations. If there's a special circumstance and we're asked to come in to do a mediation, we will do that as well. Right, right. Well, thank you for reapplying. And, uh, and um, I thank you for all, you know, your time on the board. I thank you for coming out and meeting with me because it was a marathon. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, no. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I can't, no questions. I mean, you got a great you got a great bunch of people. Very lucky. Um, yeah. you know, I just have one question more towards the uh, uh, judge if I'm sitting here. <laughs> That's not my call. I know. I know. My thoughts. That's Sean. Talk to Sean. Jeez. But again, good seeing you. Thank you as well. Thank you. I have two questions. Thank you. Kennedy questions. Councilor um, DePaul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
No question. Okay, okay. sorry, Councilor Ferrer. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait, Councilor Hurley. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions. Uh, again, great resume. Only question is, James F. Fitzgerald Jr., is that a, re a relative? That was my dad. Okay, I practice law with my dad, um, which is always a great experience. Um, again, you've got a great resume and I'm gonna be voting for you. So thanks very much. Thank you, I appreciate it, Councilor. Councilor Ferrer. Thank you. Once again, I did ask uh, other attorneys, including Councilor, I don't know about you, who thinks you're awesome. And uh, I remember uh, Sean Flaherty saying you are outstanding. So uh, you have my support this week. Appreciate it, thank you. I, I think you got a great resume and uh, I, I really am glad you had a chance to work with your dad all those years. And uh, Council Ryan Ella and uh, Chief Fernandez give you the thumbs up. So you'll be getting my vote next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Close. thank you. Thank you. Next. Are we having the hearing on Dennis Mahar? And I'll quickly read into the record of the letter from Governor Baker. I am pleased to nominate Dennis M. Mahar for reappointment to the position of administrative judge, Department of Industrial Accidents, to a six year term expiring September 15th, 2026. I submit this nomination for the advice and consent of the Executive Council. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 23E, Section 5, I'm enclosing the nominee's resume for convenience. Sincerely, Charles D. Baker. And with that, uh, I heard whispering before this hearing was called to order that you're waiving your statement. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and are there any witnesses to speak on your behalf? None of the judge. Hernandez. Which we heard from. So I'll start with uh, Councillor Hurley. Do you have any questions for the nominee? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. And, and again, um, I'm with Pellegrini Steely. Um, I also have the expertise of our fellow counselor Ionella, um, and I think you've done a great job from all I've heard, and you will continue to do a great job with your reappointment. So thank you very much. Thank you have many pieces of the South Green and Sealy group out of work there. They do an excellent job. Their clients couldn't be any better represented. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Ferreira. Thank you. I'll just reiterate that, uh, again, Council Ionella. Um, Sean Flaherty and Michael Lacan reached out to me on your behalf. Um, and they all think you do a great job, so you have my support next week. Thank you. Council Jumbo. Same with me. Uh, how long have you been on the board now? 18. No, 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Well, you've done a wonderful job, and uh, I'm sorry, and Ellen, and your chief, give you a big uh, good rating, so that's fine with me. I'm going to vote for you next week. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Councilor Devaney. Nice to see you again. Good to see you too. I'm going to just yesterday. I'm going to pronounce your name the Irish way, Maha. Right. right? <laughs> okay. And um, I, I just wanted to say that um, uh, you know, 14 years. Have you seen any changes in the way the the board works or the people coming through? Change at all? Well, I think obviously with the pandemic, things changed a lot. I mean, we've got the, uh, yeah. the virtual conferences now. I know the conciliations are, are virtual. Uh, hearings are, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit different. They were wearing masks for a while. That was troubling. Uh, what we'll be giving testimony, but it's that's been the biggest change. The type of work people do is changing a little bit too. We don't have some of the. Uh, manufacturing type jobs that once upon a time we did, but we have a lot of other type. Of have you seen in the 14 years that um, injured workers, disabled, uh, have uh, drug addictions? Has that increased in the 14 years? Well, actually it kind of peaked. Um, Judge Barrett was talking about the opioid um, yeah. alternative treatment path, but I think opioids were such a big um, out for painkillers for most of the doctors and patients got them, they reduced their pain, they wanted to have them, and then they just stayed with it. And I 
think addiction was a major problem. I think as we've all seen in, in the newspapers, on TV, and everything else, that it's it was a really big problem. In speaking towards the opioid um, alternative treatment program, it, it was Judge Hernandez who started it and uh, got it rolling. And one of the things I've seen over the years with that is because of all the publicity about the companies with their addiction plan um, to get people hooked, that people are starting to realize that they have to be off it. So in terms of getting people off opioids, it's really gotten to be a lot easier from our perspective because they want to be off it. That's well, you know, I, I think that it does to see that this was a sign of the time with the opioid, you know, and um, now are they involved at the bottom with the drug force or are you can handle it right there with that opioid? No, it, no, we don't get no criminal or drug courts at all. Yeah. Very little. No, I, I think that, that that's wonderful. Um, so um, you've been working through the pandemic. Have you found anything different in the pandemic uh, regarding your getting your work or your workload? Or... I, I think the workloads kind of stayed the same. Um, I think once again, Judge Hernandez. I know he said something nice about me, so I'm going to work on being saying things nice about him. But he kept the place open. It was really important to do that. I mean, even the trial courts were shut down, but we were still doing virtual conferences, all our motion sessions, all our pre-hearing. Our pre-trial conferences, I guess we call them. They're all virtual. We get them done. They move along. Cases are moving. Our backlogs are really reducing. Um, well, you I'm, told me you told me one advantage to the pandemic was that you could expand the print and everything. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at the medical records, it's a lot easier. And it's a lot easier if you if you saw me read my uh, my. My opening is a big print. It's it's much easier to read uh, when you can blow them up. So there was an advantage. Much a big advantage to that. Yeah. And Listen, but Candace talked about the idea of. Uh, thank you for serving for 14 years and um, working with a great group. And uh, thank you again. And um, I'm so pleased that the four of you have been reappointed, rightfully so. And I just have to tell you that we have one lawyer here that is next to it. I know that he's very happy with the floor too, uh, Councilor Ionella. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Ionella. Yeah, same as the others. I mean, Judge Marston, I can't say enough. He's just great. Uh, I'm just going to say that I can't say enough. Uh, I can't say enough. 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 I Thank you, Council. Council Duff. Uh, thank you, Judge. I, I, you're actually one that I did receive calls about. Your reputation is stellar, and you certainly deserve it. So I remember. Thank you, Council. Council Kennedy. So I sound like a broken record, you know, in terms of relying on uh, Chris Ionella because, you know, he's the one we go to. So I neglect to say with him. Thanks for John and about all four of you, I've got great things to say. Uh, I'm not that good at math, but I, I think you said you were on 14 and a half years? It was 13 and a half. 13 and a half, and how long is this appointment for? This is, uh, well, it'd be four and a half, right? So, so one and a half more years. So um, years. using my math, you need one more term anyway, right? You're going to be back here in a few years uh, to, to get that little uh, bump at the end when you retire, right? Maybe we'll see about I have an appointment with Tennessee or something before that, so we'll see. Well, <laughs> we'll see what Ryan Ellis says about you in four and a half years right. and, and then decide. Yes. All set. I'll vote for you next week. Thank you, Counselor. The only thing I'll add to what's been said here is I think you have a great background. I spoke of this yep. at the last hearing. It's great to see folks who have had career experience outside of the law. You have great community involvement. Um, and I heard the highest possible praise from uh, Michael Occasion, which I think I mentioned to you when we spoke. Um, so with that, I have no questions for you, but I do look forward to putting your name forward and supporting your appointment at our next assembly. Thank you very much. And with that, this hearing is closed.